Think of it this way, consumption and production. That's another way to think of the rhythm, rhythms in our, in our day. Certain times of the day, we're consuming, and certain times of the day, we're producing. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, after 6 to 8 p.m., I usually decline in my concentration. Besides podcasts or reading, what else can I do to keep busy? I currently play a few instruments and I'm writing a book, but I still feel I have a few hours where I don't have much going on. So, Jazz, this is a good opportunity to think about what life was like for man before electricity, right? When the sun started going down, um, and it's, in fact, our physiology it has something called a circadian rhythm, right? And so it's based on the positions of the sun. Our circadian rhythm uh, is how our hormones in our body respond to the position of the sun. When the sun is up, our body releases a lot of anab uh, uh, catabolic hormones, right? Like adrenaline, cortisol. These are things that give us energy. So on the peak of the day, that's when we got the most of our energy. And that's when it's best to do most of your extroverted work. Right. But as the sun starts going down. Right. And if there's no, you know, the, our biology is older than electricity. As the sun starts going down, that there's sort of a shift and your body goes from releasing adrenaline and cortisol to re to releasing more anabolic hormones, growth hormone, um, as well as stimulating the parasympathetic branch of the nervous system, calming, more calming hormones. Right. This is even when like uh, your anabolic hormones go up, testosterone, things of that nature. So there's a basic pattern to everything in life. It's incredible, right? You look at the seasons of the year, but then also look at the seasons of the day. Every part of the day has a season that's likened onto a, uh, an annual season. If you could imagine that nighttime is like winter and summertime is like high noon. And so we have to base our activity, base our level of activity, base our expectations for ourselves based on the positions of the sun. That's the normal, natural thing to do. During the day, it's a good idea to get outside and get sunshine, get fresh air, be active. But once the sun starts setting, it's a good time to settle in, settle down and become more passive. If you find that you, you have a ton of energy in the evening time, it's likely because you're not active enough during the day. This is an interesting thing when people who say, oh, I can't sleep at night is because you're not because you're not expending any energy during the day. You're not using up all that energy. And so once the sun starts going down, uh, you, you're feeling all hype, plus all the electrical, all the electrical stimulation, right? The lights and the computers, um, they stimulate us. That's why when we do the evening calls, you notice that I put on the blue blockers. I put on my swannies, right, because I'm trying to reduce the amount of uh, stimulation that's coming from the screens and from the lights into my body so that I could sleep well at night. And I tell you, I sleep really well at night when I wear those. I've become pretty addicted to wearing those where if I don't wear those, I almost start getting a headache in the evening time. My body has become more sensitive to the artificial light. Now, I bring all this up to encourage you to allow your body to do what it naturally does based on those rhythms. When eight, you know, you say 8 p.m., between 6 and 8 p.m., you start settling down, that's a good time. Like you said, your concentration begins to wane. That's a good time to listen to podcasts, like you say, read books. But you're asking me what else you could uh, do to remain busy. And I'm going to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing in terms of passive activity, low energy activities, where during the day you're active in the evening time is good to be passive. That's a good time to kind of absorb that's a good time if you're if you're a meditator or a prayer prayer that's a good time to meditate it's a good time to pray it's a good time to plan your next day it's a good time to uh like, like you do read listen observe calm down wind down don't put so much pressure on yourself to get a whole lot done during the winter right if we, if we keep using that analogy that nighttime is like winter. That's like somebody during winter time, you know, trying to go out there and uh, till the soil and plant seeds. You could plant all the seeds you want, but the but the ground is cold, right? You could try all you all you want, and uh, try to.
try to get things going in the evening time, but it's backwards. You can do it. You can do it. And a lot of people do it. I'm not one of those people. Once that time rolls around, evening time starts rolling around, I don't put pressure on myself to do anything. But guess what? I'm up at the crack of dawn. As soon as, that, as, soon as there's sunlight, I'm out. I'm up. I'm doing stuff. I'm very active. My 9 a.m., I'm halfway done most of the things I need to get done for, that, for the day. The most important uh, extroverted activities I need to get done, they're done by 9. By 12, I'm already starting to uh, change the type of activities I, I engage in. And by evening time, I'm winding, winding it down. There's a really good book, by the way, that I just want to recommend to you guys so that you can, so that you, can um, you know, look deeper into this circadian rhythm and stuff. There's a book on traditional Chinese medicine called Listen to Your Body. And in that book, you know, depending on whether you believe in Chinese medicine or not, it's a little, I guess you could say pseudoscience, but it's fascinating, right? Listen to your body. And in it, he's got, on one of the chapters, he's got a, a clock and it breaks down what hours it are, are, what hours your body is, is producing what kind of energy. And uh, there, there, there are even best times during the day to take a nap, right? He refers to what organ is most stimulated during what time of the day, right? There's another one also called Growing Healthy with the Seasons. And so these two books kind of work together to, to, to help us organize our life in, in uh, seasons, right? As a lifter, right? You guys know that there, there are seasons, right? There are bulking and cutting seasons, if you will. So uh, uh, two books, highly recommend. Listen to your body. And it's really that one I'm referring to the chapter on what is, what is the best time during the day to do what? and then um, uh, getting, growing healthy through the seasons. I don't remember the name of that author, but there's, there are certain times of the year that it's better to do, to be in, in, engaged in certain type of activity. So bottom line is, dude, you're doing all right. Don't judge yourself. What we often tend to do is to judge the natural rhythms of our body, judge the natural uh, um, tendencies of our, of our body, right? When you're tired, it's like, look, you're, you're actually just tired. There may be something that you wanna look into to optimize your energy, but the bottom line is the body knows best and it's good to listen to your body. Playing instruments, he says, you know, currently I play instruments, I'm writing a book, and I wanna, I wanna get those things done in the evening. They're not necessary. It's not necessary that you do those. Those are extroverted things once again, right? You know, writing is, is extroverted. You, you have to produce. You're producing. Think of it this way. Consumption and production. That's another way to think of the rhythm, rhythms in our, in our day. Certain times of the day, we're consuming. And certain times of the day, we're producing. And it's, uh, it's of your best interest to allow those rhythm, rhythms and to take notice. Um, there was one more book that I was thinking about that kind of mentioned the same thing. It's called The Power of Full Engagement. So I'm just giving you guys a bunch of different books to consider. The Power of Full Engagement. It was, it's a business book written uh, by this one guy who was an a Olympic coach. He coached Olympic athletes. I don't remember what it was, a track and field or something. But uh, he, he recognized that if business people, you know, CEOs, entrepreneurs, lived their life like athletes, they would increase their longevity and their and their productive capacity, and it's basically what I'm saying to you right now. Uh, you know, being fully engaged is called you know full engagement, powerful engagement. Being fully engaged uh, at every step of the way, but producing when it's time to produce and consume when it's time to consume. So I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. And we talk on things related to becoming kings in our lives in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.